Hey, hey, Digital Business Evolution. Welcome back to the show. Today we've got Mike here for another episode of Mic Drop. Well, thanks for having me back. It's been a while. I thought I did something. It has been a really long time. Then again, we lived together, so I don't know what was going on there. I don't know. Life, anyway. life got busy. Did. So we're chatting about something today that has, it's all the hype, it's all the rage, it's all the talk, and it's the idea of feminine versus masculine. Mm. As though it's this bad battle. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> I often rail about this. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to sort of debunk the myths or just sort of set it straight for those people who are confused or maybe feeling like, I don't know, just they're not sure what direction to take in their business because there's this quote unquote battle of masculine and feminine all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, I think the confusion is coming from this fabricated idea that there's like a masculine way of doing things and a feminine way of doing things. Yeah. So hopefully we can shed some light. And the only reason we're doing this is because when we launch and when we speak to our clients, whether it's before or prospects or whatever, we hear over All and over and over about, the, they're, they're, they're typically newer to the digital marketing space and they're just confused. And then oftentimes what we'll see is like, we'll have students that will go through our program and we're, you know, you're teaching a lot of uh, fundamentals and a lot of, uh, strategies that'll help them basically do what they want to do. Yeah. And then they get kind of confused with this message that they hear from, from some people online where there's a different way of doing things. Mm. And I want to just, yeah, I, I think that it's important for us to really talk about this because we've seen so many of our clients get confused with this for a long time. Some of them, it puts them out of business, yeah. which is sad. Well, I think it's confusion and, and, and fear. It's confusion and fear and also like misunderstanding how they feel about a, a tactic. So yeah. for instance, like um, sales calls mm -hmm. or uh, urgency, right? There's this, there's this whole narrative around, around like those things are masculine. Yeah. And it, it, no, they're just they're just strategies that people that people use, and when they're used in integrity, they're effective. Right. Well, it's just marketing. So right. And, and so, so so like the, the, anyway, the reason why we're doing this is because it's like so many of our clients have gone and tried to do that. It's put a lot of them out of business, mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into the specifics of how. And it's or or they've come back and said like, okay, I need I need more like strategy. Mm -hmm. And again, we're kind of just like, it's not that you need more strategy, you just need help executing on the strategy that you already know. Yeah. And you thought that there was this like other way of, of doing things. Yeah. Well, it's almost the promise of like a magic pill. So yeah. what I want to say before we get into it though, is this is actually a three-part episode. So we're going to break it down. Today, we're sort of debunking the myths together. And then part two, we're going to get into the masculine and feminine brain because that actually is... That is a real thing, part of science, and we're going to talk about that. And then in part three, I'm going to break down how I have started to, over the years, really separate either my days of my week or parts of my day into different masculine and, and feminine energies, not strategies, but energies, yeah. so that I can decrease the overwhelm and increase my productivity, essentially. And just for clarity, because we've spoken about this similar topic before, and we got some comments, like, especially on your YouTube channel, where people thought we were talking about... Uh, gender. We are not talking about gender. No. We are talking about uh, just the categorization of masculine and feminine feminine energies. We're not talking about uh, men, women, and everything in between. We're right. not talking about that. Yep. Cool. So something that we hear a lot, like you were saying, is this idea that I don't want to use a strategy, which is often categorized as masculine. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to do a strategy. I don't want to follow it. It feels so um, structured. It feels so boxed in. I feel so uncreative. Like I can't tap into my creative flow when I'm following some sort of structure, but we both know that structure creates freedom. Humans love structure. Kids go on summer vacation. It's like banana pants. Like it's just craziness. Humans, even dogs, we love structure. We do. So structure creates freedom. And when we have things implemented in systems and automations and stuff, that's actually the thing that allows you the space and the time to then go frolic and, and do whatever it is that you want to do, as opposed to manually doing everything behind the scenes. So there's sort of this misconception all of a sudden that the strategy is now masculine when it's, it's not like you were saying, it just is. And there's so many different examples of different types of strategies that people are using in their business that 
you can say are masculine or feminine, it doesn't really matter, but they are strategies. And so there's now, like I said, this almost like diet pill like industry. Counter, counterculture or something. Yeah, it's like a quick fix. People, we love instant gratification. We're looking for a quick fix. So it's tantalizing. It's very sexy and alluring to say, you don't actually have to go do the, the thing that it's going to be required. You don't have to go do the work. You don't have to put in the seven steps or follow the box or the framework that works, that has worked for centuries. Success leaves clues, right? But instead, do it this way. Take this diet pill and you'll just have these automatic results, which we both know is not true at all. And to your point, we have watched clients of ours and, and friends sort of go down that path of, well, that looks more exciting, easy, and fun. And then let's, they're let's very be, quickly let's reminded. Be more specific. They're very quickly reminded, though, of like, it doesn't work. Let's be more specific. Like, what's an example of, of something where we, we've, we've seen like the lean back and... Oh, well, people uh, thinking that it's they don't like want to launch. Yeah. They okay. don't want to launch. It's like launching is dead. Launching is hard. Launching requires me to show up and do different phases of you know, market research to uh, validation, to promotion, to building up hype, to all these things, or just in general, sales, right? Like... I don't want to have to invite anyone or, or do a sales pitch or a sales call because sales is sleazy, which is ridiculous. Sales is a service. Sales is only sleazy if you're out of integrity with what you're selling. Yeah. Right? Because like, Or if, how you're selling it. Or, or how you're selling it. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, right? If you identify a, a, a need in, if you have some sort of, if, if there's a need for something in the world and you're able to provide that, whether it's a service or a product, mm -hmm. right? And you are selling this in an effort to help those people, right? right? So it's, it is impact, but okay, it's a business. So people are going to pay for that service to solve the, or, or product to solve the problem that they have. So it's an, it's an equal exchange, right? right? Again, as long as your product is something that actually works and you're not a snake oil salesman, um, then you're good. Now, wouldn't you want to get your product or service in the hands of as many people as possible. Yes, right? Of course. Right, because I mean, then you're helping more people. So if there are strategies and methods of getting things or creating more awareness for more people about your product or service, then isn't that all that matters, right? If your product and your service is in integrity, wouldn't you want to get that in front of as many people as possible? Well, it's your responsibility. That's what we always talk about. If you have a solution to a problem, it's your responsibility to share it with other people. Right. And that's all that sales is. So it doesn't have to feel sleazy. It shouldn't feel sleazy when you believe in it. And like you said, it's in integrity. And it's ultimately helping people. You have a solution. So you're just telling people about it. But to go back to your initial question of giving an example, there's sort of been this dialogue for a while now, maybe, I don't know, a year and a half or so, yeah. where all of a sudden sales is bad. And so... People are calling feminine, and I'm saying this in quotes if you're not watching YouTube, and if you're not watching YouTube, come watch us, <laughs> but they're, I'm saying this in quotes like feminine energy launching or what they're calling attraction-based marketing is this quote unquote leaned back approach where people are just going to magically fall into my lap. And we both know that is not true. It, it, it only happens with strategy. So when your content is speaking directly to your ideal client's pain points and pleasure points, and you're speaking their language and you're using their verbiage and you're interesting and you're educating and entertaining and giving value in all these layers, then they quote unquote magically appear in your ecosystem and in your world. And so you by, by, by chance are just doing exactly what regular marketing marketers are doing as well. And you're getting really clear on what it is you do and who you help and how you help them. And when you put that content out, they quote unquote magically appear. So it's no different than what someone who's using a masculine strategy is teaching. There is no such thing as a leaned well, back but, approach. Well, but exa yeah, exactly. So if you take feminine, it's receivership. Sure. Right. Well, in this case, it's receivership. Masculine is, is giving, right? So in this particular example, if you were to just sit back and receive, you cannot receive clients. It doesn't work like that. And now people might say, well, how do I see this person getting so many clients? Well, I'm going to tell you. They, they are marketing that they sit back and receive and that there's another way of doing things as opposed to building out strategies that actually will, uh, will, will attract, right? So like you can think about here's few, funnels, you could think about urgency, mm -hmm. scarcity. Um, all not bad words. Lead, lead magnets, right? At the end of the day, all those bad work, quote, bad words, 
those are intended to get your product and service in front of the person. So you might say, okay, well, I see people having success. Those people are having success because they are marketing that there is this lean back, flowy approach and people are buying into it and that's the only way that they're, that's the only reason they even have a business and I'm just gonna say it and that's a fact. Right, Right. absolutely. And now if you look at the quote, the way that they're saying quote masculine being the funnels and things like that, it's like, hold on, let's take a step back here. When you think about applying feminine energy to a business, we have specific days where you go and do this. Wednesdays and Fridays, right? Jess will go and sit in creative flow. Now, she is working on coming up with new ideas and working on things that we have kind of said, okay, well, we want to build out this funnel. Now, that might sound masculine. However, Jess is in her creative flow, so she think, she's thinking of creative ways right. to build out the funnel. Can we talk funnel for one second? Just a sidebar. Let's bar. talk about it. Everybody thinks it's a bad word. People think it's scary to build. People don't want to build it. But ultimately, what a funnel is, you already have one. Your social media account is a funnel. So if we were to go, again go visual on YouTube, a funnel is really wide at the top and then it gets down nice and skinny and I can't help but think of a beer bong from college. Oh yeah. <laughs> is that what they're, is that what you called them? You guys call them that. What'd I, you we, call them? Funnels? Funnels. Oh, I think we call them funnels too. Yeah. So the dog's having his own funnel moment here. I don't know if you can hear that in the mic. Um, so it goes really wide at the top and it comes down to really skinny. And the idea of a funnel in a business is that you're taking the biggest, most broad spectrum of quote unquote leads or prospects. So that's going to be your audience. It's literally people that just hear you speak on a stage. They hear your podcast. You're a guest on someone else's podcast. You have a social media account. Someone pushes out something that you have. You have an email, whatever it, it is, right? You have this big, big spectrum. And as people get more warmed up, they go from a cold lead to a warm lead to a hot lead. They start to all of a sudden maybe engage with you and they're saving your content and they're sharing it or they're commenting or they're DMing you or they come to a free masterclass or they subscribe to your YouTube channel or whatever. So now they're coming down the funnel and then they get closer and closer and closer and then ultimately one day they might buy something from you, which is at that point they're a customer and they're the hottest lead of all. Mm -hmm. They're also then the easiest lead to buy something again. We want to nurture those customers. We don't want them to just, we don't want them to buy something and, and leave them lifetime customer value. So purely just by having a social media account, you have a funnel. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you have to build. There's no complicated like landing pages that need to be built out. You don't have to use a platform like ClickFunnels or Kajabi or something. It just, you just have a funnel. You have a funnel when you go to a workout class and you're having a conversation with somebody. It's just, that's your broad spectrum of audience. So just to clarify what a funnel is, it's not bad. It's not wrong. No, I mean, going back, to, going back to the example I just used, there's, there's people that are the, the there's people that are saying like the whole feminine lean back energy that that's their that's the top of their funnel yes because what they're doing is they're attracting people that um, have experienced maybe launches are hard mm -hmm. uh, sales calls are sales calls are icky maybe because they've experienced a bad one in their life or they don't like urgency and scarcity which by the way <laughs> my goodness scarcity right. There, if, if there is a finite amount of time that you have to coach people, or if there's a finite amount of products that you can sell, the scarcity just exists. Yes. Right? You're not creating it. No. I saw somebody talking about uh, scarcity and urgency online recently. And then two, two stories later, they said, I have two spots available. You literally are using scarcity right. by saying you have two spots available. Now, that's okay. Now, why is that okay? That's okay because if you have two spots available because maybe you only have two hours left in your work week, then you have two spots available. So when everything is done with an integrity, it's not only does it work, work, quote, in terms of uh, getting, more, getting more product or services in people's hands, it also, it also works because it, makes, it gets people to move, all right? But look at the Eris tour, Taylor Swift. Oh, it's, yeah. it's just, I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> there, but are I, now X, I know there are X amount of seats in this stadium, period. Like, that's just how many tickets there are. It's just are. a fact. It's just a fact. And people are paying insane amounts of money so, because so they want to go. So she says, I, oh, I have 60,000 seats. Is she like doing some icky masculine? No, she's, I have 60,000 seats available. Correct. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Oh my God, she's being so masculine. Tell, no, the feminine is the production, the creativity around like how the, sh the whole show is going to go, right? right? I, want, I wanted to say one more thing about 
because you mentioned creativity and um, flow and things like that and the structure, right? So I, we, we were in our mastermind this past week and I used this example for somebody. Um, and, and, and even if you don't play the guitar, you can understand what I'm about to say, all right? Or what I'm, what I, what I'm gonna say here. If you learn how to play the guitar. You should have taken it out and just given us a. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> your, your body is a wonderland. <laughs> if you, um, that was ridiculous. If you learn how to play the guitar, and when I, when I say learn, like you're not just learning songs, right? If you're just learning specific songs, that's one thing. But if you're learning music theory and you're learning scales and you're learning, you know, all the different chords and all everything behind the, that goes into learning the guitar, what happens next? The next step is the step that everybody who is first wanting to learn the guitar wants to get to and it's, mm -hmm. it, it is the hardest step to get to because you have to get through all the fundamentals the next step is then you can get into creative flow yep but you can't get into creative flow unless you have the structure so even something like music it has structure yes. it has math built into it okay once you learn all that then you can get into creative flow yeah. and it's the same thing with business it's like you can't just get into creative flow if you don't even know what you're doing in well, the business. You, you can, but you that's can, but it's, it's luck. But it's not going to be effective. So yeah. to tie it together right there, right? I mentioned that you have Wednesdays and Fridays where you're more like creative days. And yes, it's structured and masculine that we have like, you do that two days out of the week. But we do that so you actually have the time to do it away from, away from the rest of the parts of the business. During those days, those are the days where you know what's going on in the business. You know that we have, say, a webinar or a masterclass coming up. Now, how we're going to launch it, yeah, there's going to be strategies and things like that. But you're going to put in your creative, your creative energy, energy. you're going to put your creative hat on in terms of how you want it built out. Right. From the branding to how you're going to make people feel to the words you're going to use and to what you're going to say. Yeah. And... You know, I just think so often now where I'm seeing people, we're seeing people create the top of funnel by saying that there's this other like lean back way and people are getting sucked into it. Yeah. And then they realize that like, oh, the only way that there's another way is if I just say there is another way and it yeah. creates this like intentional or unintentional uh, Ponzi, Ponzi situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been launching Empower, our signature program for five years. We've done 18 rounds and it has progressively over the last few rounds gotten louder and louder that some of the objections people have for wanting to join are that they, they just invested all of this other money in another approach, which was promised to be this lean back kind of feminine. You don't have to do sales calls. We don't believe in X, Y, Z, whatever that would be. And then they're like, it didn't work. I didn't learn anything. I don't have any structure. I don't know what to do with my hands help me and now I want to join. And that, that conversation has become more and more prevalent over totally. the last few years. And it's, it's frustrating. It really is because to your point, well, it's frustrating because it's hurt. It's hurting. It's hurting the people and the industry. Well, yeah, yeah, but that marketing is a strategy and that's the part that kills me. And we have had this conversation before, you know, saying that you don't do sales calls or I'm sorry, you don't you do pain point marketing. It, You're it, literally marketing to someone's pain. Yeah, what's of, their pain? I'm scared to do this. I'm not good at marketing. My launches haven't worked. Or right. So they're playing into that pain by correct. saying, I don't do pain point marketing. That is that pain is point pain marketing. That is pain point marketing. And by the way, and we've talked about this as well, the science says, you can Google it, that we move about 80, 80 to 90 percent of the time, we move away from pain. It's very rare that we move towards pleasure. In fact, can you I tell were just, the rat example. Yeah, you can tell the rat example. So you were just telling me about this podcast, which I want you to share the story. But I also just for a second mm -hmm. want the listeners to think like, when was the last time you made a decision for anything? Like perfect example, going to the gym, right? You get to a place <laughs> where you're like, I know I'll feel better when I go, but that in itself is pain. Cause if I don't go, then I'm not going to feel better. And it's like, we go because we know we're going to feel better or we go because we have a goal. We want to hit a certain weight. We want to get certain types of muscles. We want to look a certain way. It's all of our decisions, even, even food. Or I don't want to look a certain way. Right. That's the pain. Yeah. So it's like even food, you're deciding on like what you should or should not eat based on there's pain. There's no shoulds, it. by the way. No, but it's your yeah, own yeah. should yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. you're creating based on the pain that you have. And so we do this all of the time. Even you get invited to go to like a thing that you don't really want to go to and you make the decision based off of the pain. It's very, very rare that we make a decision just purely based so on pleasure. So let me pleasure. tell the story about we'll, that. We'll set goals for pleasure. 
but the thing that gets us to move to take the action is the pain of staying the same. It's not the it's not the goal that I'm gonna we want to get to. I'm going to tell my rat story. Okay, you, okay. I'm going to tell my rat story. Okay, he's just going to interrupt. Go for it. Tell my tell your rat story. So I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about, I think Jordan Peterson used this example. It was a psychology experiment where uh, they had, I'm probably going to butcher part of it, but they had rats essentially in, in a tube and they were, uh, I think, starving. They were very hungry. They, had, they had, hadn't fed them in a while. And they attached some sort of like mechanism to the back of them so that they could measure how, uh, the, how much force they were exerting when they would move forward. Now, what's going to make them move forward? So the first thing that they did was they wafted some cheese, cheese smell into the tube, right? And the rats exhibited X force. And they were a little surprised by the, the lack of force that they exhibited, but they didn't have too much to compare it to other than the fact that they were like, huh, I thought that they would be a little more, in a little bit more of a frenzy yeah. to get to that cheese smell, right? Then they wafted behind them. Oh boy, you're gonna have to spell it. The smell, <laughs> yeah, our dog is here. And he knows the word. They wafted the smell of a cat into the back of the tube. And lo and behold, what is, what is that in relation to a rat? They're, they're scared, right? They'd be scared of a cat, or they're scared of a predator, right? So in this case, this is the, this is the, this is the, the, the pain, excuse, thanks, thanks. I was gonna say the undesired outcome. This is the pain, cheese being the pleasure, right? So people can move towards pleasure all day long, but at the end of the day, this experiment really showed that the amount of force that they were exerting was something like, and I, I don't know the exact metric, but it was, it was something like off the charts yeah. in terms of moving away from the pain. How much faster. How much faster, yeah. yeah. So, and the, they kind of tied it together. It was, it was uh, Alex Ramosi kind of talking about this particular experiment, and he said, yeah, look, you can move away from the pain, and while you do that, you can eat the cheese along the way, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, you, yes, you're gonna reap the benefits of moving away from the pain. And, and again, going back to at the end of the day, if, you're, if your product or service is in integrity and it really does solve a problem, then isn't that all that matters? Yeah. Helping people and getting that into their hands. Well, and it's also the, the, I love the rat story because you get this visual, right? And you can imagine the rats like oh, moving towards the like cheese. The they're not hurt, right? <laughs> I hope not. I hope they gave them the cheese after. Yeah, but like they're just like meandering their way to the cheese or they're running towards the cheese. Yeah. And there's a girl in our mastermind who her business partner and mentor always says, I don't need more time. I need a deadline. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about scarcity and urgency and people are sort of like, you know, close, closing two days till doors close is bad, which it's not. Well, it's I, just I, the truth. I think they think it's bad because they're, it's either they're doing it themselves or they're seeing other people do it when. But are you in integrity? Maybe the doors aren't closed. Exactly. We like, are you the doors. actually closing the doors? Because if you're in integrity, that I have 60,000 seats at my Taylor Swift tour. Like it right. just, it just is. It's not like she has, oh, you know what? I just found 10,000 more. Exactly. Let me release some more tickets. Right. Like the doors are actually closing in two days. And what that does is it creates a deadline, which is ultimately what we want to make a decision because we humans will just sit in indecision and it just causes more pain. And how many times have we done this? Oh and yeah. We torture totally. ourselves all the time. Totally. With indecision. Yeah. So I don't know where we're at. That's it. We're just putting a bow on it. Put a bow on it, baby. Put a bow on it. Yeah. All businesses have strategy. Everything in your life has strategy. Well, yeah. And, but here's the thing, too. It's like, I, I feel like they're not denying that they're strategy. They're saying that certain tactics are masculine strategy and certain tactics are feminist. No. That's where it's like, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. We're drawing the line here. That is, that is, not, that is not accurate. No. You can use intuition, uh, receivership creative flow, not forcing things. You can use that energy, that lean back approach when it comes to making decisions or maybe cr maybe coming up with an idea of new content you want to do or coming up with an idea or even a new course, right? But when it comes to when it comes to the actual execution, yeah, the doing and the doing and building, like that is is the masculine. Yeah. So there isn't like a masculine strategy of the doing and a feminine strategy of the doing. It's just, that's where it's, I feel like it's just getting really perverted and, 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 it's, and it's, again, to full circle, it's causing a lot of people to get confused, to spend money on programs that are, provide, are basically false promises. Yep. And what the worst thing that I see is 
then they go start doing that themselves, yep. which at the end of the day, then it's like, are you trying to help people or are you just trying to pad your, pad your bank account? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's all marketing. That's, That's what right. it comes down to. It's all marketing. That's right. Because they're promising sort of this sexy, flashy diet pill way. Yeah. Because who would rather go to the gym day after day versus take a pill that's going to get you the result in less time? Right? Totally, totally. So. If you're in it for the if you're in it for the long haul and you really want to, you know, impact people, then you're going to have to have some have some strategies that are going to help you get there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you heard it here first, and in the next episode, <laughs> <I hope so. laughs> we're going to dive into the actual difference between there is masculine and feminine, not strategies, but there is different types of energy. And again, like Mike, you said before, has nothing to do with how you were born, what you identify as, or your, your sexual preference. It's just different types of energy that we have um, in our bodies and brains. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Cheers to your evolution. See you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.